this week on Hermitcraft. Right. Nether Hub is awful. It is. We need an actual builder to step up and do it. You know, someone like you. Watch this. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap. My name is Pixel Riffs, our writer is Loy XP. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Minecraft's Tricky Trials update now has a release date, and the pre-releases are rolling out, which not only means we can look forward to the Hermits taking on trial chambers and taking their boats out for a walk on a lead, but also that we can finally bring the crafters and copper grates into our own worlds after seeing the Hermits play with them for the last few months. Among the other celebrations of Minecraft and its community this past week, we also heard the news that Minecraft will have its own animated Netflix show, which we'll probably watch if only to see what they do when their moon gets big. But Hermitcraft continues to be our favourite current Minecraft show, so let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. We're, we're not actually playing. Starting with DocM77, who started to complain about the amount of sand he has to place in his hourglass. <gasps> oh, I need to get shulker boxes, I need to get that out of here, and I need to manually... Well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of my actions, accompanied by some sage words of advice from Smallish Beans. You know what's even more painful, though, than shoveling 15 shulkers of sand? Placing it all in the hourglass? <laughs> yeah, dude, I regret oh, my life what a choices. Shame. If, on if only you hadn't, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Built a massive hourglass, maybe that would have been easy. Maybe you charge diamonds instead, that could have been a, a good method instead. Yeah. But Doc doubles down on not needing diamonds by building yet another redstone contraption out of them, this time at the shopping district, where he digs a hole and begins work on the server's most high effort armor trim shop. Not only does it offer hermits the opportunity to preview their armor trims before they make a purchase, it's also spam proof, which is a priority on this server. Okay, but you yeah, know, I no. just wanted to know if you somehow could break it, and I don't think you know. Pearlescent Moon stops by to road test this bold claim and offer Doc a P.O. box because his alternative is firing his packages out of a warp speed railgun. I mean, look, if you if you want to apply, you know, come and come back with your resume. Let me know all your skills, ads, and everything that you got, and right. we'll consider it. Doc's sand strategy is grinding people down, although perhaps in the wrong ways. B double O just drops off some chests of sand because he takes the concept of paying in shulker boxes too literally. He keeps saying, "Oh, it's simple. Three shulker boxes of sand." is one full unbreaking diamond shovel. I know he did that on purpose. It's not surprising he's cagey about the fine print though, because between him and Good Times with Scar, they're planning to flim flam their way into the terracotta market permanently. This is gonna be a little bit temporary, but it's temporary because we need to get this shop in right away. B-Dubs sets up a terracotta shop and they follow a trail of Rendog plants to the neighborhood's latest meeting, where they leverage Scar's popo power and insist the Big T group is in violation of their permit terms. Then they leave before anyone can object, and B-Dubs announces his plans to build a courthouse so we can all see the violence inherent in the legal system. Popo po, po, po has ruled yep. that you were in violation of not having a shop for your permits, as yes. there is now an existing terracotta shop, which makes you all in violation of not stocking your shop. I see Come back you. with a warrant. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's coming. We can improve this. 100%. Look, they've added trap doors so we can improve it, right? Oh, yeah, flip the flappers. <laughs> yes. Oh, That's how this we works. Can flick. I've heard. I've heard this is how this works, yeah. The trope lovers among the fans will be happy to know that Good Times with Scar does appear to have come back wrong from the Far Lands. Last seen Teller yeeted to the edge of the world, Scar returns with the grand idea to make his own nether portal into even more of a headache than the one Doc put him through. It's actually gonna kill you, and it's gonna be great. It'll encourage everybody else to make deadly portals and we'll never use the nether again, and we'll all live happily ever after. Continuing the railway of his base train, Scar leads it into a hanging Tesla-powered portal, but don't believe its beautiful facade. Inside awaits the firing squad of decked out skeletons and an especially lost drowned. It's gonna get ya! Watch Watch this, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love it! What's more, Cubfan discovers that a different side of the portal will teleport you into a completely different gate in the nether, located midway through the mailing system. All the more reasons to maybe take the train. To be even more of a nuisance, Scar trades the terracotta permit from iJevin, not only propping up the big T conflict, but also getting to annoy Rendog specifically as part of the deal. Didn't even take any convincing, mind you. Okay. Because he's just going to be like, what, what are you doing here? And your only goal 
is to just stand by him as close as possible without talking for as long as possible. <laughs> Though Scar himself can be quite the menace, now that Cubfan has brought him a spare copy of the custom horn shulker box Scar lost and let despawn. Little did we know, Cub's soundboards come with an extended warranty. I heard you lost your horns. We got that this is illegal. This is illegal! Oh, this is a great day, Cub. I've had a rotten day, Cub, but this this really brightened my day up. There's much attention brought to his other business, the Kaboom Fireworks Shop, which recently has left and blew up. In its stead, Cub builds a whole new facility where people can purchase exploding colors, and to boot, builds a Death Rush minigame in it, where customers can dive into a chest room to grab as many firework rockets as they can get away with before the randomized timer goes off and pyrotechnics start blasting from the walls. Or at least that's what's supposed to happen. On Tango's run, the game just locks him in the room to think about his behavior. How do we... Uh, hell? Do, do I get to die? Yep. Punch in an iron door. If anything, Tango Tech has been more than charitable this past week. For one, he freely admits that most of the work associated with their mail system project ended up dropping onto Etho, and as such, it's only fair to compensate him for his time. Though time may not be the deciding factor here, because surely Etho will spend a lot of it actually looking for his compensation. While Tango sure delivers a lot of redstone to Etho's lab, he very much squirrels all of it around in hidden barrel boxes. Perfect. And there we go, a shulker full of redstone blocks for the big E because he did pretty much all the work on the mailbox system. The question is, how long will it take him to find all of it? In the spirit of doing things sideways, Tango completely T-bones the idea of a slime farm, making his own one into a flushing floor with Zoglins, of all things, running around. The resulting slime is supposedly delivered to the surface and boiled in the extra teapots Tango adds to his steampunk starter home because Pearl said it would really help the composition. It's downright reasonable compared to Rendog's ambition to have honey flow through all of his base area. With the river aficionado at his disposal, Ren requests False installs a double-decker river at the alien biome, which makes less sense the more you think about it. But I'm, I'm a terrible communicator, you know, what can well, I say? Oh well, yeah. <laughs> but if there's someone to break the water physics beyond what they already are in the game, it would be False, given how hard she's been going at the river formations, spanning the neighborhood, and really most of the common area. It needs a little something something while it's in progress, and uh, you know, I'll get it to a stage where I'm just happy with it. In the meantime, she moves all of her possessions into the storage system within the rotund build from last week, meaning that however many buckets of water are now alphabetically sorted. A more musical time awaits her when Corrales asks if False can touch up the crab lake on his property, and it turns out that the crabs are still celebrating that Demise is over. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> are you playing that? No. Corrales also commissions Hoffen, the 3D artist, to model him a pina colada, but couldn't pay her to get him stuck in the rain. No matter, Corrales will have people stuck for days having built a hedge maze leading up to his leaf block store. The hedge fund, if you will. Why is this so 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 tricky? No, it's not that way, is it this way? No, that's not the way. I'm lost in my own maze. Lest we forget that, of all people, it's him who got the Bushes permit. Though fate has a sick sense of humor, and of all the possible missions Iskel's machine could give him, Corrales was randomly assigned the one to mispronounce something until people correct him. Corrales. The man who's been calling Azuma Sheshwami for over a decade and made a career out of saying the word bush wrong. Yeah, this one might take a while. However, the thing is that I pretty much mispronounce every word I use, so 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 it might be tricky. Anyway, Hypnotized sent him a gift horse, and Corrales immediately no clips into its teeth. While Hypno has been mostly getting through his collab footage, what with the big tea meetings and shorty bullying, his business enterprise has piled up enough money to score a trophy, which Azuma Void had to be mailed personally about. Oh, so yeah, we actually have three more that we can get. Surely at this point Azuma could just automate the replies for these, given he's now rigged half of all wood to autocraft. With his tree farm adapted for birch, oak, and spruce, X has rigged enough of the autocrafters to mass produce every fence, gate, or fence gate of these wood types. And we can rejoice! That took me such a long time to do, but dang, it's all working! Although it's only one of three. Though duty calls, and before Azuma could reach the plank constant, he's off to congratulate Joe Hills on his millionth stone block mined, and on the nine he mined afterwards. Why nine? Why didn't you go for the even one million? Yeah, I why didn't you go for the me. even number, Joe? Those are the same 10 stone that I accidentally broke last night while I was setting this up. I, I mean, I tried to care, and I still screwed it up even though I was doing my best. 16 weeks into the season, the Magic Mountain Collective assembles for its second meeting. They get naked and then blown up. We should attend meetings with no stuff. 
Put our stuff away and meet back here. I thought I'd just kickstart things. Oh, what did you just do? Oh. <laughs> Could have been an email. <laughs> the primary takeaway of their discussion is that the Magic Mountain is a volcano now, and that from now on, at every meeting, a random person will be assigned the role of Grian and will have to come up with a way to kill everyone. We called it a murder cult day one, and they finally admitted it officially. Maybe we can um, start a little bit of a tradition here. Kind of like the imposter, like the boogeyman situation. But we could That's make exciting. like a little lava dome down there and we could sacrifice people to it, right? Scott, what well, is it with yes, this? Perfect. Fittingly, Grian has already ensured a payload of seismic activity since he's dug up a creeper farm within his cliffside base, but this time intentionally. Also, the mischief snails have escaped Scar's ore peak and are now reselling his diamond ore from inside Big Ron's for regular diamonds. This makes it canon that snails only have silk touch tools. But forget all that, there's flag lore. There's flag lore. Gemini Tay has continued her shoreline build, only slightly derailed by building two custom mangroves. The flag lore is that the anchor building has the wind blowing the opposite direction from where other flags in the area are pointing, and I'm pretty sure neither of them are flowing where the default Minecraft clouds are. But it is canon in Minecraft that a banner you place will wobble in whatever direction you do, so if anything this is game accurate. Also sunflowers always face east. And look at it! Look at it! I'm Joel's giant sunflower is part of the ensemble he builds right outside Doc's hourglass almost to remind him what the actual thing he's supposed to be selling is. This is a giant tree stump and it's bleeding honey. Which is what Joel will be selling from under it. You need that reminded to you given that the stuff he pushes through the mail is purple, as per the agreement with Pearlescent Moon from a couple of weeks ago. Technically could be called spam I'm pretty sure. Please buy it at spawn from Pearl. By Purpur. Uh, this is a robbery. With Joel marketing Purpur for her, Pearlescent Moon can turn her attention to other things that start with P, like pickles, the post office, and terraforming, where the P is silent like in Pterodactyl. Process, I also take the opportunity to market where I want Pans to go with some really bold netherrack. The landscape started shifting around her base almost by accident, but it turns into an exercise of how she can blend her area with Patangos. I got the biggest grin, that's gonna be amazing. She takes a sneaky peek at Impulse's Metro Mayhem minigame, after which Impulse gets to play Guess the Number of Pickles in the Trees, a number which will only expand if Pearl can convince Gemini Tay to restock the shop that sells them. There's two green pixels. Pixels. Jam, they're pickles. I'm putting in a complaint with Hermitcraft HR. There isn't one. Is it going to resolve the this problem? The problem with immediately? us needing an HR is most of the time people would be complaining about me, so I probably shouldn't <laughs> <laughs> make. Finally, Pearl adds a package drop for leftover post office shulkers, which will frankly be necessary with most of the server now connected. Stress Monster's post box is up and running and gets its first test when Iskal mails her the explanation of how Mission Possible works, although he's so eager to explain it that we get a video demonstration from NPC quest giver Iskal, who becomes apartment salesman Iskal shortly afterwards. And the irony is not lost on Stress that she turns down the apartment, only to read her mission book and be given the task to build a bedroom in someone else's base. After all, the bedrooms in her own murder mystery street are still under investigation, and if you move in now, you might end up as one of the clues. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, do I just place it? Oh, I got the excavation mark. Iskel actually opens Mission Possible up to the entire server. Now he's happy with the decorations at the entire HQ, and the red carpet has been rolled out. It's worth noting that this isn't even a for-profit business, but mostly because his flight fireworks shop is bringing in enough diamonds to break mathematics as we know it. There are a lot of diamonds! 37,430... I can't be right. I've, I've typed the wrong thing in on the calculator. The fireworks will be no help in Impulse SV's parkour course, though especially now a section of it goes underwater. The combo of Dolphin's Grace and Depth Strider might be a little too potent, but at least it'll be a chance to wash the honey off your shoes. But a fun little obstacle to, to swim through, I think uh, if you swim straight you'd probably be okay. He performs a similar service for the piglins in his bartering farm who need to wear leather boots so they can stand on a powder snow block, but this means giving up the old group of piglins, all of whom are much more attached to their gold ones. So I need to make sure that all of them are going to accept boots and on. Fortunately, he's not so attached to his own shoes that he minds them being blown up as the Magic Mountain crew break ground on their handmade natural disaster. Skizzleman can add not being blown up to the list of needs tested by the first layer of his pyramid base. He gets even more experience with that from Cub, who has him play several rounds of the fireworks shop's more deadly version of Supermarket Sweep. In exchange, Skiz coaches Cub through the obstacle course of his physiological needs, then later adds a powder snow segment in case the participants don't have cold feet already. 
And if I miss where I need to go, then I should fall down to the bottom. Come through this way, come that way, turn. No, I already forgot what it is. <laughs> Rendog's physiological needs are of course being provided for by Gigacorp, who have also provided the blueprints for a jet-powered exocraft, but it's up to Ren's imagination and the folks in the comments to fill in exactly why he needs it. Especially when the guy building all this looks like Willy Wonka, but with even more drip somehow. I'm unable to reach any Gigacorp official, and the support forum on the GigaWeb is basically dead, 7H15. Well, 7HF, on behalf of Gigacorp, I apologize profusely for the delay in your delivery. After designing it like a Lego set, the Giga truck looks mighty fine and even has a cockpit interior when he wants a breather and a storage midsection where he can stash all the blocks he's using to terraform the planet. Cool, it's, it's like um, we can populate this over time with the different things that we need. And, and finally, there's Mumbo, for whom terraforming is also on the cards, although first he has to deal with the popo violations piling up outside his heavy metal stores. This is not a pop-up shop. This is the shop. This is how it's going to look forever. Mumbo brings his own photo reference into the mix and fashions custom trees and boulders for the area around his cliff base, although it's difficult to concentrate on custom trees when he reminds us Doc M still hasn't delivered on his share of the profits from the log shop. Despite this, he still grasps the concept of Australian architecture when Iskal pitches him a penthouse, but rather than wait for it to be built, Mumbo decides to actually extend the apartment interior one layer at a time and wait for Iskal to notice. So we'll see you in 50 episodes when Iskal discovers he's taken over the whole building. Do you think you'll notice? I don't think you'll notice that. There's no way. This is the most facade facade I think I've ever seen in my entire life. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you.